Hello, good morning, and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. We are here at 5.29 a.m. Central Standard Time, 2020, November 19th. Deep into the scamdemic, the great medical swindle. But anyway, getting off of that, because we already know that. Oh, it's already pretty obvious. No need telling you what you know, what you can see with your very eyes. We have Bellows blended whiskey, American blended whiskey, meaning it comes from somewhere in the United States of America. All right. That's all it has to require. It could be a mixture of whiskeys from here, there, and everywhere, like the Beatles would say. It's You'd ask the Beatles, where's this whiskey from? And they would say here, there, and everywhere. Good morning, Ronald, says Daryl Macias. Good morning to you. So, bottled by Bellows and Company, St. Louis, Missouri. 80% grain neutral spirits, 20% straight whiskey, 80 proof, uh, no age statement, meaning... It's aged at least four years because, oh, uh, 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 retraction. The whiskeys, uh, this whiskey is blended for maximum smoothness. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I said the age statement. It's on the uh, bourbon. Aged at least four years because that is the law the, or the regulation in pursuant of the law. It uh, The straight whiskeys have to be aged at least four years if there's no age statement. It's not any kind of great age. That's not any kind of great requirement, but it is a requirement. In Canada and Scotland, it's three years. Whether they put it on the label or not, the minimum is three years. You can age it less than four years in the United States. All right. But it would be two. The minimum would be two to be blended whiskey because it has to be 20% or more straight whiskey. And straight whiskey has to be aged at least two years. So once you put all the puzzle pieces together, then you can get a clearer picture of what the requirements require. Old Thompson brand. What about new Thompson? Well, this is old Thompson. American whiskey, a blend. Also from somewhere in America. Could it be whiskey from Kentucky? Blended with whiskey from Indiana and so forth. Yes, it could be. And it most likely is since they're saying American whiskey instead of Kentucky like they've got Heaven Hill, Quality House, Kentucky blended whiskey. If they put a designation like that, it means it has to be from Kentucky. Okay. And 80% uh, grain spirits, just like the other one. Glenmore Distillers, Owens Distilleries, Owensboro, Kentucky. In Bardstown, Kentucky. Well. Glenmore is not in Bardstown. That is Barton 1792 Distillery. You say, well, how can it be in two different places? Because Glenmore is owned by Sazerac, so they it's it's not a real company. It's part of a real company. Just like Bellows is not a real company, it's part of a real company called Lux Co. Now, Glenmore has had a distillery in Owensboro since the mid-1800s, mid-1800s. Even during Prohibition, they were one of the few companies allowed to make medicinal whiskey. Oh, uh, Prohibition, that's another example of a, uh, a great medical swindle. Because that was the argument behind it. It's going to help alleviate social problems and medical problems. And it was all lies. It was lies. They made it all up. All right. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, well, price. Bellows I purchased at International Market on Veterans Boulevard, eastbound. That's a four-lane highway, eastbound in Metairie, Louisiana. International Market, $6.99 for this drab labeled bottle liter a liter 699 wb used to have a, a I, I thought it looked like a house fly 
maybe it was supposed to be a honeybee, but they don't show that anymore. Maybe too many people thought it looked like a housefly. And do you want a housefly on your whiskey bottle? I don't think so. Not a picture, not a real one or a drawing of one. Anyway, I think it was a bee. Get it? Bee, bellows, bee. And, and, and that. Old Thompson, $7.99 at International Market. $7.99 at International Market. I did write a review. I have the only review. I have the only written review for this whiskey in the world <laughs> on uh, International Market. I mean, on um, Riddle. Oh, get it together, man. Total Wine and More's website. I would have written a written review. I would have put a written review on Proof 66 or distiller.com, but they don't even have this thing listed. And I'm not going to go about the trouble of listing it. I'm not that concerned about it. If they have it listed, I'll list. I'll write a review. If they don't have the whiskey or whatever liquor I have, I'm not going to write it. Okay. OT. Old Thompson. OT. Old Thompson. Call me for some overtime. OT. All right. So that's it. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Um, used to be different. They, if you look at old ads from the 1940s, it was 86.6 proof. And it was a 65-35 blend ratio. So it's 35% straight bourbon. More than likely bourbon because Glenmore made bourbon. And... and, and 65% neutral spirits. And they would always say the choicest neutral spirits, the best corn liquor <laughs> with no color or aroma, I guess. Huh? They must be different grades. There's obviously different grades of that stuff because if you look on uh, Midwest grain products, they you can order grain neutral grain spirits or grain neutral spirits of different grade levels. It's like level one, two or three, something like that. And the price goes down as the quality, I would assume the quality drops. So I'm being cheeky, but it's probably not all the same. It's obviously not the same if they got three different or four different price levels. Look on MGP website. All right. Appearance. Trying to make sure they're the same level. They are exactly. Um, I can't believe it. I usually get it off. Get it. Um, you know, it doesn't come out quite even, but today it did. Just tan, amber, whatever you call that color, light brown. Whiskey is a brown spirit. You say, what about that clear corn whiskey that they sell? Well, that's what they call a white spirit. You say, why it's got to be white? Well, it could be clear if you feel more comfortable saying clear. <laughs> uh, grain spirits can be purchased uncut. I'll give you an example. Let's go back to the Luxco website. They show their featured products. These are ones that may have their own brand website. Arrow, Peppermint, Schnapp. Man, I don't mess with stuff like that. No, but they, they people buy it um, for various reasons. Okay, Arrow Cordials is a whole line of them. El Mayor Tequila, the mayor. Had never had that ever clear. Well, that's a famous product or infamous the original grain alcohol product, Everclear. And, oh, they don't have a link to the website. Oh, yeah, there it is, brand website. Uh, tremendous brand recognition and a loyal near cult status following. 100% grain spirits, neutral spirits distilled from grain. Uh, neutral spirits distilled from grain. 190 proof. That's uh, basically poison, okay? You say, well, how can they sell poison? Um, well... Oh, there is a brand website for El Mayor. Well, it's poison if you're stupid enough to drink it uncut. Because if you read the bottle and read their website, they'll talk about how it's a base for making your own liquor or whatever. It is not in any way intended. Exotico Blanco Tequila with a skull on a pretty cool looking bottle. Ezra Brooks. So I know there's a... Uh, website for that minor case rye whiskey well, that's a new one on me minor case huh. 
no product description. All it says, straight rye whiskey. Gives you no information. Well, that's great. Rebel Yell. Or maybe they changed the name. Pearl. Rebel Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey is a defiantly smooth weeded bourbon made according to time. Oh, I guess they changed the website because Rebel Yell would make you think of a, a certain government at a certain time in a certain place. And so they want to be politically correct, which is interesting because they'll probably alienate their audience who is 90% either favorable towards Rebel Yell or distinct, dis discernibly indifferent to it. So all the people who are um, activists against that don't buy it anyway. So I like that. It's interesting. Rebel, Rebel Bourbon. You say, well, they got some sick people in the world. It's a it's a historic brand, Rebel Yell. I know, but it's a sick society. So, okay, uh, Yellowstone. Well, we could go on and on. Quiet Man, Irish Whiskey, and then they have all their value brands, which goes on forever and ever on their website. At least Luxco still features a lot of bottle shots and information about their products. Sazerac. Uh, what you call it? Um, Bean Suntory. They give you a little information about a few feature products and the rest, they'll just say, we make a lot of other stuff. Call us if you want information. And Bean doesn't even say that. They don't even mention the other stuff. And at least Heaven Hill will give you a product specification list of, I guess, most of their stuff, some of their stuff. That's just technical, like looking at a um, spreadsheet. It's not too um, exciting. All right. I'm going to have to do some research on Rebel. Yeah, I've never bought it. People have told me it's not that good anyway. That's what people have told me. This I do not know, considering I've never had it. I just know it's a brand that's been on the market forever and ever. Okay. Figuratively. All right. Is there going to be a big difference between these? They're a dollar difference. Exactly one dollar difference. And... Total Wine and More is only, what, five blocks east of uh, International Market. International Market is not actually on Veterans Boulevard. It's a block south on a street called Barron Street. And a lot of people have trouble finding it because it's sort of obscure. It's really not obscure. It's right off the boulevard. But it just that um, if you look at Google Maps and stuff, it gives the wrong location. It does. Cheap and foody. So I never... I've used Everclear to make lemon cello. Okay. It has purposes. There's diesel, the Sazerac rivalry brand diesel. But to drink it straight, you, you'd just be out of your mind. You're crazy. But a lot of people are crazy and foolish and irresponsible and unaware or whatever. All right. But I used to hear about Everclear in junior high. They would talk about it. And I'd think to myself, as a 13-year-old, I'd be thinking, I'd never touch that. You know, I wouldn't. I would never fool with something like that. Are they crazy? This smells like, I don't think there's going to be much difference here. And I may not be able to take them up, tell them apart. I just think it's ordinary versus ordinary. My here, 7127s. How are you, brother? I'm one of your new subscribers. Well, thanks for joining. I appreciate you watching. Cheers to you. This smells like a little sourdough bread. All right. So there's like a little sourdough Back note. So they're probably using sour mash um, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, which could be anything. Ezra Brooks, Ancient Age. I mean, depending on which company I'm taste, tasting, I don't know which is which. Jeep and Foodie. Caleb says Everclear makes purple passion. It's sold in a plastic two liter soda bottle. <laughs> oh, man. Never seen that, but I wouldn't be shocked. Brian, the beer snob, says, you are up very early. I know I got up. I started waking up at 1.49. I wanted to sleep longer, but I ate those hot. I ate those spicy. Uh, it was two for two, six. I had a coupon two for one. Like you got two six piece chicken nuggets at Wendy's for a price of one. It was only $2.18 after tax, but I got the hot. And spicy and they're really hot and spicy i was eating them and i said man 
this is what I think of when I think of hot and spicy. Because most of these restaurants, you order the hot chicken sandwich and it'd be like just the slightest bit spicy. But this one was fiery. And well, I liked it. But it was my, it was a lot. But it was burning my stomach earlier. You know, my inside. So I was like, Ugh. it's burning. It burns. It burns. That was just regular old tap water. So um, it woke me up. <laughs> All right. This smells uh, like nut oil. Like pecan oil, which is making me think it's the old Thompson. Because I remember when I did the solo review, which I posted this morning, it had that pecan oil aroma. I don't know why it just does. If you're looking for a lot, a lot of bold aromas, a lot of excitement in the smell, forget it. There are only 20% straight whiskey. The rest is what you would call, I guess, what do people call it? Moonshine, just clear corn liquor. Yeah. No aroma, no flavor. It's like a, a blended scotch. All the aroma and flavor is going to basically come from the single malts that they blend in with about 80% or whatever the percentages of grain whiskey. And you can get some really nice and interesting flavors uh, for sure. These, well, I guess the flavors are okay. I wouldn't say interesting <laughs> too much. Uh, more like tolerable. All right, taste time. Cheers to you all watching. All right. But I think initially, I think this is the Bellows. And I think that's the old Thompson. And and let's not say it's too bad Bellows shut down because Bellows would never had Bellows was never really shut up. What I mean is they were never really a real, they were never a distillery company. They didn't own distilleries. They didn't own any equipment. They just owned an office in New York City, Manhattan somewhere. William Bellows and Sons, they were wine procurers. They would buy and sell wine and liquor, put their label on it. And so they, they just sold that operation to somebody who sold it to Luxco. I know they sold it to Jim Beam Company, that's right, and then they sold it to Luxco. So it's like, uh, like that company in England, London, England, called uh, J and B Just Arinian Brooks. You've seen J and B Scotch with that pretty green and that pretty green bottle with the uh, yellow, red, and black label, J and B. But there's not. There was never a J and B distillery. It's just a whiskey brand they came up with to put under their own name. Somebody made it for them. It's still done today. Get on their website and they tell you all about. We buy wine and sell it. <laughs> And buy, they buy and sell brands. That's all they do. It's it's in London, England. That's the, the office. Enough of that. J and B is a decent blend. It is really good. My hair. Jeep and Foodie says so. Bellows is like Pabst. Yeah, they just now they are. Uh, you know, gonna start brewing again. They say at in L.A. at that Irwindale plant, unless they bought it just to flip it. You know, you never know what Paps. They said, we're going to look at revitalizing it. Uh -huh. They have a mini brewery in Milwaukee, but it's just like a storefront brewery. Same thing in San Antonio, more or less. But uh, they haven't operated an actual brewery in, since 2001, 19 years. So they just get brands made for them. Doesn't matter, I guess, what difference does it make. If you like the brand, you like it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. If you think it's okay, it's okay. Taste. Um, there's a lot of vanilla. I think that would be the main, the main taste. You would say, <clears throat> this is a vanilla style whiskey. In other words, bourbon style. You get the vanilla flavor from oak. They don't add vanilla to it. Although they could, they actually could because with blended whiskey, you're allowed to add flavorings and color. They call it harmless colorings and flavorings. I think they even use that acronym on a tax and trade bureau website. H C F something. Harmless colorings and flavoring. All right.
you don't have to do it, but you're allowed to do it. And apparently you're allowed to add flavoring to bourbon, but I guess you have to disclose it. The bourbon itself can't be flavored, but you can add flavoring to it. Go. I was just at Walmart. They have 10 high bourbon. But look at the label. It says 10 high bourbon with natural flavors. You say, what are the flavors? I, I don't know. They're natural. Like vanilla extract, something like that. Oak extract. But uh, apparently either the regulations were relaxed or changed or there was perhaps a misunderstanding of the regulations. But it clearly says in the bottle, go look at it. Bourbon with natural flavors. Doesn't say coloring though, just say flavor. So I was shocked because I thought bourbon of any sort except for blended. And it doesn't say blended bourbon. There is, there is a uh, 10 high blended bourbon, but maybe I need to read the back of it. Maybe it does say blended. I'm just not that concerned about it because I'm not going to buy it again anyway. The 10 high I had was a uh, Hiram Walker 10 high. But the man on there with his leg uh, resting on, you know, we had one leg up on a barrel, Hiram Walker. Um, this stuff does not taste as much like vanilla over here. This stuff has more of a bitterness, like it's bitter, sort of like uh, maybe um, wood or, or if you're eating pecans and you get some of that pith part in there, it'd be real bitter. And the shell, and you're like, bleh. Now the pecan, the pecan, pecan meat, or people around here say pecans, the pecan meat is sweet and nice. But if you get any of the detritus, it's like, bleh. So this one has that. And I think it's Old Thompson. Uh -huh. I said it smelled like pecan oil. It tastes like it. Is there a lot of vanilla? No. Uh, I gave this a, what, a B minus on my solo review? I can't remember. It was, it was somewhere like an 80. Well, I'll tell you what. Some of these products, the more you drink them, the more you hate them. Like, they don't improve. Some of them just stay the same. They don't ever change. They're like... It's sort of all right, the first taste, then the second time it's sort of all right, then it's sort of all right, and then the next 30 times it's just sort of all right. Some start off so-so and they just get better. You're like, oh, I didn't notice that, that aroma or flavor note. And then it gets, it builds and you say, yeah, 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 yeah. But not this one. This one, this is the sec, no, third tasting and it's, it seemed to be deteriorating. It's five in the evening where I live and watching your videos makes me want to pour a dram already. <laughs> okay, my here, I don't know where you are. You must be in India or somewhere like that. The Maldive Islands. All right. Uh, Johnny Tactical says the phases of rock gut keeps getting worse after every sip. I would agree with that. <laughs> All right, let's go over here. This one has a lot better taste. It's a lot of vanilla, and it's not a lot of bitterness in that off kind of, bleh. Well, I think it's the Bellows, and I think the Bellows wins. First of all, it's a dollar cheaper per liter, where I live, I don't know about where you live. Secondly, there's no like bitter pecan pith or off-putting stuff. But let's, let's, let's not forget, I've said it many times, if you taste a whiskey A against B, and then against C, and then against D, and then against E, the four times you taste it, it may, it may taste different just in when it's intermixed with those others. I don't know why that is, but it will present different things. It's a strange phenomena. Phenomenon. Well, it's more than one, so it's a phenomenon. All right. Um, I 
it, it's they're both medium body and they have a kind of medium finish kind of linger a little bit um uh, the, the old thompson is not bad it's not like oh it's so horrible i can't take it it isn't but it doesn't have too much going for it it doesn't excite you it kind of gets you down uh now you might say well why you think it's such such a cheap product at 7.99 a liter and it's at the bottom shelf out of the way at total wine and more and nobody pays any mind to it but yeah it's for those exact reasons it doesn't have any kind of notoriety it doesn't have any kind of meaningful following in it that's appropriate because it doesn't deserve it <laughs> Bellows, likewise, is ignored by the world, and I would say rightfully so, but it does have a little more sweet vanilla flavor. It has a more authentic bourbon flavor than the Old Thompson, and in fact, honestly, a better flavor. Hard liquor always hurts my stomach, says Brian the Beer Snob. It feels like I have to have rocks in it. The buzz is different too. That's why I mostly only drink beer. Crown Apple is quite outstanding though. Yeah. Uh, hard liquor does not sit well with many people. And if there's any kind of inkling that you have that it's not sitting well with you, just avoid it. Um, it's not worth it. Just, and some people can drink hard liquor and love it. And then beer just turns them off and it makes them ill. Well, then don't drink it. And I know so many people that if they drank wine, it gives them a terrible headache and they just can't, well, then don't drink it. I don't know why my friend David bought that white wine at the salvage store. I was like, he said, I'll just cook with it. Now, here we are three years later and I'm still looking at it. I said, well, uh, you ever going to drink that stuff? Yeah, I'm going to get around to it. Well, white wine is not going to hold, you know, um, but I don't care what people buy. It was cheap. Yeah, but I don't buy anything if I'm not going to drink it. Like, in other words... Yeah, I'll make an impulse buy, no joke, no problem. But it's going to be an impulse buy based on the fact that I am going to drink it and I'm not going to waste it unless it's rancid, I've, like that Gibson's Vineyards Marsala. I took one sip and I was like, nope, and dumped, I dumped it down the sink on air because I said, hey, ain't no way I'm drinking something that tastes like rusted steel wool. And uh, when I had that uh, Bay Rock, the, um, what was it, Bay Rock Hell or whatever, whatever the one from that uh, cloth, uh, cloth, I can't think of the name from Germany. I'll get it right, of course, when I get off the air. I did drink about four ounces of it to my terrible regret. Oh, how ill I was. Rancid beer. Oof. I'm going to say this is Bello, Bellows. It's, it won't say OT. If it says OT, that means I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. I'm right. This is the Old Thompson. It's all right. There is a little vanilla starting to come into play. I guess I needed to breathe. Um... But, uh, I mean, if you don't buy either one of these, you had not lost anything. So if you want to pay $6.99 or $7.99 for a liter, go ahead, buy them. I mean, it's fine. I would never and ever pay more than $9.99 a liter, though, for these. Don't do it. I'm begging you not to do it. But if you can get them, like, super cut rate cheap, eh, go ahead. Do your experiments. Do your taste challenges. It ain't hurting anything. But to say it's exciting or anything, just look at the labels. There ain't nothing exciting about these labels. Drab. The labels reflect the product, really, with blended American blended whiskey. The labels are drab, and the experience is drab. I mostly drink hard liquor, but I love my beer, too. I guess I'm one of the lucky ones, says my hero. You are. You are. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching this video production, and we are out of here. And later, the next taste challenge, by the way, is Grand Legacy. Grand Legacy blended versus Old Thompson.